Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. So we are in the last session for this course. So um, congratulations to all of you uh, because you are ending another course and you will have some time to rest your mind and your body. And then you are going to continue with the process. But uh, today is the last session for this course. So we are going to end this course, completing the information that we have about the future. And we were talking about the uh, tense number three in future, that is the future perfect. So we are going to end with that um, information. Then we are going to see the number four and some exercises to end this session um, of this course. So we are going to start because uh, we have just one hour to complete all the information that we have for this um, session. So let's see. We are here and we have just um, the first thing about the future perfect. So yesterday we were talking about the future continuous and we were seeing the uh, examples um, I know, but uh, it's part of the process. So I was saying that um, Perfection is not the end when we complete our, our actions or activities. In this case, uh, perfection, we can uh, find it in the, in the road. So we are learning and we will find a lot of people that I, I hope that give you uh, some knowledge because uh, when we find someone new, we can acquire knowledge from the people. And I, I hope that I give you something new for your uh, learning process. So uh, we were uh, learning about the form um, of uh, the future continuous. Also, we were seeing the uses in some examples. We were talking about the study verb. And also we were doing an activity in which we were uh, saying the things that we um, will do in a, a different time. So now we are going to continue with the future perfect and we have uh, the first um, a statement there. And it says the future perfect is used to talk about a completed action in the future. And yesterday we were saying that um, it's something kind of complicated to think about a completed a action or situation in in future because uh, we know that it's kind of hard to understand that um, some actions are not going to happen in future because that is not something uh, certain. We have like two options uh, for the future. We have one that we are very, very sure that something is going to happen. And we have the other option in which we know that um, it's not going to happen because of some other actions. Tenemos eh, nuestra frase acá donde dice que vamos a hablar de acciones completas, pero en el futuro. Eh, ya hablábamos con anterioridad. Eh, Y decíamos que en muchos de los casos eh, no estamos seguros de que vaya a pasar esa acción. Más que todo cuando utilizamos el will es para algo que no está 100% seguro, seguro de que vaya a pasar. En, eh, al contrario de, de going to, que sí sabíamos que iba a pasar, pero que no se trataba de un futuro muy lejano. Pero en este caso tenemos que hablar de acciones completas en futuro. So, 
we are going to see the forms for these uh, part of the tense. And we have the number one. Number one, and it says the form of the future perfect is will, want, plus have, plus past participle. Will or want, if we are going to write some sentences in negative, plus have, plus past participle. So we have here the, um, like something that we need to remember that the regular past participles end in a ed and irregular past participles don't follow the common conjugation pattern because in that case we are going to change the form of the verb so i have a list but in this case it's just irregular one but i have a long list of verbs you have the, the, the list of verbs, but in this case, I have one uh, list just for irregular verbs that you can use to create your sentences. And I will send you the link because in this, uh, you have the three parts of the verb and it's uh, kind of long. And in this, in, in this link that I will send to you, you can um, find action verbs, auxiliary verbs, steady verbs, modal verbs, phrasal verbs. Uh, you're going to use uh, or, or find uh, the verb tenses that we are using, um, confusing verbs, uh, gerunds and infinitives, passive voice, conjugation, do, does, and did, present progressive tense, past simple, past progressive, and all of the tenses that we need in Spanish, in English, I mean. So I will send to you and you will find all that information in that link because it's necessary that we have that kind of tools um, to help us in the, in the process. So I'm sending to you the list. You have it in the group right now, but in this case, it's not like we are going to use it in this a precise moment is something that you can have to help you in your process of uh, learning English. Because we know that um, we have a lot of things that we need to, to know. Um, we have a little, uh, lot of information that we know to acquire to um, feel like very secure about the things that we are going to say in English. Because uh, we know that uh, one of the most complicated things in, in this process is to speak with others. So having uh, those tools will help you uh, to feel uh, good with your progress. So, so in that case, it's just a tool that you are going to use in the future. Uh, if you can uh, search for all of the, these topics, um, one by one, you will find more information about that, that topic. Uh, that we have in this document and you can compare all the information that, that you are going to have. So we have the example for this one or this structure about the future perfect in which we are going to use will or want plus have plus the past participle. So in this case, we are going to use the verb finish that is a regular one and we are going to write the endings with the ED. So we are going to write the examples for all the subjects that we have in English. So we have here the positive, We have negative, and we have question. So again, we have um, 
many examples doing uh, this process. So you know that I'm going to write the subject, then uh, the will or one, and then the complement of the all the things that we need for the sentence. So, so in this case, I have I, you, he, she, it, we, and they. Now we have wheel, 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 and if you want to uh, uh, use the construction, it's it's okay too. And we have the next element that is have. In this case, we are going to use have for all the subjects, because remember, when we are using an auxiliary or uh, this kind of help in the sentence, we are not going to change that kind of uh, verb because we have something that is um, doing that function. So in this case, we are not going to change uh, the form of the have. We are going to use have for all of the subjects. So we have the first part of the structure, and now we are going to use the verb finish. So in this case, we are going to use it in past participle. In this case, it is finished. And the last one. So now we are with the negative part. In this case, we are going to use want. Or if you want to use will not, it's okay. I want, I won't have finished. You won't have finished. <clears throat> we we uh, we want have finished and the last one and they want and now we are going with uh, the question that in this case as you know that uh, we are going to change the um the position of the words, and we are going to write will at the beginning of this sentence. Will I have finished? Then the last one, will they have finished? So in that case, we have this structure with the different uh, categories of uh, sentences that we are going to use for this uh, tense or this structure. 
And remember that you have to use the, and we have here, let me, you have to use the past participle to complete the structure of these um, sentences and questions. Um, in this case, we are using just a regular uh, verb, but you want to use the irregular verbs, you can create all of that uh, sentence and a question with uh, those uh, verbs because you have uh, the list and you can access to that information to create that kind of sentences. So we are going to see the uses and some examples for uh, those uses for this structure. We have the use number one. And it says, an action that will be completed before a specific time in the future. And we have the uh, example. And it says, next September, we will have been married for 15 years. In this case, it's, yeah, we can say that it's kind of certain that in the next September, you are going to have something like this because it's not something new. This has a long time happening. Now we have number two, and it says use by or by the time to mean sometime before. Use by, in this case, I'm going to mark by because it's the, the, um, the word that we are going to use to uh, talk about it this time. So use by or by the time. To mean some time before. And we have the example. I will have finished this report by the time you are home. Now, use number three, and we have use in, in a day's time, in two weeks' time, in three months' time, etc., to mean at the end of this period. <clears throat> to mean at the end of this period. And we have the example. And it says, in three years time, I will have completed my degree. Mm -hmm. 
So in this case, uh, if you can notice that we are using um, a specific time to um, talk about the action that is going to happen. And if we have, um, we have three uses and in the first one, it's talking about that it's an action that will be completed before a specific time in the future. So we have like um, a specific moment in which this activity is going to happen. So we have like a timeline in which we know that something is going to happen. Or as I, uh, as I said before, that um, it's something that is happening year by year and it's not something new because in that case, it's something that you know that it's going to happen. And, and in that case, it's not something that is uncertain. That is something that is going to happen for real. Then in the use number two, if we are going to use by or by the time to mean some time before. Um, in this case, um, we are doing something and we are planning to end that action in a specific time. As in the example, I will have finished this report by the time you are home. So uh, we can count the minutes uh, or the hours in this case, for the travel of someone, and we are going to continue working in that uh, report, uh, report. So we have like a specific time in which I need to complete uh, that action. So in that case, I'm going to mark that specific time and I'm going to end um, the, uh, the action before the time has. And in the number three, years in, in a day's time, into weeks, time, in three months, time, etc., to mean at the end of this period. So in this case, we have the example, in three years' time, I will have completed my degree. So in this case, something uh, that also is certain, and that is not something that we are uh, just uh, thinking because we have like, a plan, or we have like in this case, um, a step to follow, because in that case we are studying. So we know that uh, we have like um, the specific time to end that action. Uh, we know that in some cases uh, we have troubles when we are studying, but in this case, uh, that person is not, is not going to think about uh, that problem. Uh, maybe um, they have like, good degrees or something like that or, or good grades i mean uh, so in that case um this person knows that it's going to end the degree in three years so in that case we need to be um, sure very secure about the action that we are performing so in that case we can complete the action in that specific time that we are talking about Now we are going to see number four, that is the future perfect continuous. And it says that we use the future perfect continuous to show that something will continue up until a particular event in the future. We normally use it to emphasize how long something will have been happening for.
So in this case, we're going to talk about like um, uh, some action that uh, we are going to express the time in which this action is going to happen. And it's something long if we have to wait for a long time to complete uh, this action. Um, or this action will change if we have another action that is going to change the, uh, the way in which we are doing that action. So in that case, we are talking about action that is happening um, maybe in the present and that is going to continue in the future, but if something else happens, that action will change in the future. So we have the form for this uh, tense or this part of the tense. And we have the form of the future perfect continuous is will or want plus have plus being plus ing. That in this case is the present participle or the gerund of the verb. So we have the examples as in the other ones. So we are going to add the uh, the table in which we see the examples for all the persons that we have in English and also for the three parts that are positive and negative in question. And we have here again, I he, she, it, we, and they. Next, we are going to use will. Then we are going to use have a been. And at the end, we are going to use the uh, ing form of the verb, and we are using drive. So in this case, we are going to write driving. And you know that for all of the uh, subjects, we are going to use the same. So now we are going with the negative part. Again, the subject. Now we are with the negative part that is want. Having, driving. And we are going to have the same for the others. And for the last part, there are the questions. We are going to change the um, structure and we are going to have will at the beginning. Will I have been? Driving.
would she have been driving? I'm so sorry, uh, I don't know if it's going to rain here because I hear something. Yeah, I think it will be raining in a couple of minutes. So I think that's why my connection is not very well because it didn't rain all day, but now I think it's going to rain in a couple of minutes. So. I'm starting to have a problem with the connection because it's kind of hard to have a really good connection here in this place. So we are going to continue uh, hoping that this situation uh, won't happen again in, in, in this uh, session because we are going to end today. So I need my, my connection to end the session. So. We are hoping that it's not going to happen again. So we are going to continue with the example and then we are going to have the uses and examples. And we have, uh, tell me, does it go? I have a room. Uh, um, what is the meaning in the sentence? You will have been driving. You will have. You will have been driving. Yes. In that case, uh, we can say, Tu estarías manejando. Ah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. In the future. You, You're welcome. So we are going to end this part and when and then we are going to talk about the uses and we have some activities that we are going to um, to perform. The activity number one, it's um, you are going to see some images in which you are going to um, like explain what are they doing, but in this case you are going to use um, future perfect continuous talking about the activities that they are doing because they are very specific. So uh, I will write some answers in which you are going to see uh, how to create that sentences or how to uh, express the ideas that you have about uh, the people um, activities that they are doing. So I will write some examples, then you uh, will have some time in which you are going to think about the the activities or the things that they are doing in the future. So we are going to end this part then with uh, the uses and examples, and then we are going to see the activity. And the last one will be will be will have been driving and now we are going to talk about the uses and example for this part and we have number one to show that something will continue up until a particular event in the future. Thank you. 
Oh, I mean, I write wheel twice. That's not correct. And we have the example for this. So it says, in October, I will have been working here for 10 years. Así que para este uso, ¿verdad? El, el primer uso que tenemos de esta estructura, eh, podemos eh, notar que se trata de una acción que se lleva a cabo, eh, igual que la del matrimonio, ¿verdad? Que se lleva a cabo por eh, una cierta cantidad de tiempo. En este caso, se trata de eh, que vamos a mostrar que una acción va a continuar en el futuro hasta que aparezca otro evento que cambie esto. Como en el ejemplo, en octubre yo voy a estar, uh, estaré trabajando, ¿verdad? Aquí por 10 años. Se va a cumplir 10 años de estar trabajando en ese lugar. Obviamente, si no pasa nada malo, ¿verdad? O no, o, o no aparece una nueva oportunidad de trabajo o no lo despiden. So, in that case, we are talking about eh, that we are going to perform an activity until something else happens, good or bad. Then we have uh, number two, and it says, to show something finished just before another time action, cause and effect. Aquí estamos hablando de causas y efectos. And we have the example, and it says, when I arrive, I will have been working all day, so I will be tired. Because of uh, we are working all day, we are going to be tired. That is something uh, really true. So in that case, we are talking about a cause or something that we are doing, and then we are going to have like a consequence of uh, that action that we are performing at that time. Then we have number three, and it says with time expressions that we were talking about time expressions um, in sessions uh, in some session ago. So in this case, we are going to use a time expression for these uh, tense, and we have by plus then, tomorrow, next year, etc. by the time, or when. We have by plus then, or by tomorrow, or next year, etc. And also we can use by the time and when. And we have a day, um, the example, and it says, by the time we arrive, we will have been traveling for 15 hours.
So in that case, uh, we are using some expressions to explain um, the use of this structure. So in that case, it's not like we are going to have another action happening that is going to change uh, the whole thing that we are doing. So in that case, it's just uh, using the time expression for um, uh, creating sentence in that case. So we have the activity number one. So it says that I am going to send to you five images. In this case, I'm going to send you like a collage. Uh, I mean, um, like a single image in which you are going to find um, five uh, people in that case that is doing something, that is uh, doing an action. So what are you going to do with that image? Um, you are going to create the sentences about uh, that people uh, using the future perfect continuous to describe what uh, they will have been doing four hours into their work shift. Vamos a crear oraciones usando lo que es verdad el futuro perfecto continuo y vamos a tener cinco personas haciendo eh, cosas totalmente diferentes. Van a tener como un, eh, in this case, eh, we are saying that they have, como, uh, ellos tienen como un descanso de cuatro horas. I mean, no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying they are going to work four hours, like, uh, van a trabajar cuatro horas en, una, en un solo momento, o sea, va a ser como, como el turno, that's the word. Eh, van a trabajar cuatro horas y ustedes tienen que decir qué van a estar haciendo en esas cuatro horas de trabajo. We have five different people that are doing a different work. But before I send to you the image, I will write some examples of sentences uh, that you can use to create your own sentence. Voy a escribir un par de oraciones de las cuales ustedes pueden eh, tomar ejemplos eh, para poder hacer sus oraciones. Um, voy a escribir un par de eh, oraciones. Ustedes toman el ejemplo más que todo por la estructura y crean sus oraciones. Después de escribir los ejemplos, les voy a mandar la imagen para que empiecen a trabajar en esa parte. So, we have here examples. In this moment, you are not going to understand uh, about the the um, the sentences because in this case, it's like just examples. But um, when you see the images, you will say, "Ah, oh, that's why." So we have the first one, and it says, "In five minutes, I'll still be reading this blog um, fast." I will still be reading this block fast. Number two, in two hours, I will be at home watching the TV on the sofa. I will be at home I will be at home watching the TV on the sofa At 9 p.m. I will be cooking a dinner Then we have this time tomorrow, I will be doing my English exam.
I will probably be playing a football on Saturday morning. I mean, probably. Be playing football on Saturday morning. I will be having dinner with friends next Friday. I will be having my operation in two weeks. I'm not sure what I will be doing next month. And the last one, I will be saying goodbye to 2021. In this case, we can, we can change the year to 2022 at midnight on New Year's Eve. So we have uh, some examples with this structure that you can uh, transform uh, for your uh, sentences. So I'm going to change this one for uh, one page because we need all the examples in the same page. So we have here. Yeah, it's almost the same. So we have some examples uh, for the structure that we are going to use. So I'm going to send to you the image in which you are going to find um, the people that is working and that you need to write or to say some uh, sentences about what are they going to do in uh, the four hours that they have to work. Así que vamos a pensar en qué van a hacer ellos en el tiempo que van a estar trabajando, o sea, en ese, en ese um, en esa jornada de, de cuatro horas, eh, ¿qué van a hacer ellos? Right? We know that in some cases we have like very clear the things that they are going to do, but in some cases it can be something different. So I'm going to send the image to the group right now and you will find all the photos in that image. So let me see. There you are. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So you have the image there. Yes. Now it's time to uh, think about the sentence that you are going to say. Así que vamos a pensar en las oraciones que podemos hacer para estas eh, personas según el empleo que tienen o según las actividades que van a hacer. Así que les voy a dar un par de minutos para que piensen en sus oraciones and then we are going to express uh, the uh, sentence. So, let me uh, take this one. Let me see, let me see. This one. And I will write it down. In this case here, because you need to have the structure in this place. So you have here the structure, so now you can create your sentence. 
So you will be um, you're going to have some minutes to create your sentence. So let's start. I don't know what happened, but I'm going to share the screen again. It disappeared. So let me see. When you have the, the sentences, you can uh, write in the chat because uh, if you can see, we have just four minutes left. Okay, we have the first one. The policeman will be, in this case, will have been, maybe. Remember the structure. Tomorrow I will have been helping to do. Uh, tomorrow I will have been helping my son doing the homework. That's that's good. In an hour, the footballers will be. We have been playing the final of the champions.
In two hours, they will have been cooking a dinner. Good. I will probably mm, I will probably have been in class in ten minutes. Do it. Police officer, okay. He will be having his lunch at noon. In that case, it's not necessary that you wrote uh, the number. When you are saying noon, it's 12. That's okay. In six minutes, our English teacher tells us about. Oh my God, it's uh, so much time because um, remember that we are uh, beginning the session five minutes um, before the hour. So in this case, I'm going to say goodbye in this precise moment. So thank you for your participation. Um, I just want to say that it was a pleasure for me to work with you and keep doing your job. Uh, you are very, very good at doing this uh, process. And you have a lot of things um to learn but in this case you are very advanced with uh, the information or the knowledge that you have so it's time to say goodbye i hope that you have a really good a uh, process uh, i know that you will have another courses um after this one so um i wish you luck and it was a pleasure to me to be working with you so thank you for everything Thank you, teacher. Thank, Thank you, teacher. teacher. Thanks to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye bye. See you, teacher. See you. Bye bye. bye, -bye.